All right, so Chaperone been on my radar because at this point, I feel like y'all making me, people making me have to defend her <laughs> because I just don't see any issue with the things that some of, like most of the things that she'd be saying, I don't, I don't understand why people have an issue with it. Now, she's made it clear that she doesn't want to pick sides in this election, in this, you know, political game or whatever, because of the terrible caliber of the choices that we have. She said that one side is obviously better than the other. Okay, let's repeat that so that we understand that that's what she said and that's what so many other people are saying, that yes, we know that one side is obviously better than the other, but she said that we shouldn't have to settle for what we have in front of us. And I don't see why what she's saying has upset so many people because there's, in my mind, there's nothing wrong with it. So initially what started this entire saga was this Guardian interview where Chaperone said, I have so many issues with our government in every way. There are so many things that I would want to change. So I don't feel pressured to endorse someone. There's problems on both sides. Later on, after she got backlash for saying that, Chaperone said in a TikTok video, there is nuance to what I say in interviews, and I think it's important that people use critical thinking. She said that the full quote uh, included her urging people to use their vote. She had said, vote small, vote for what's going on in your city. At the time, though, she didn't clarify then that she was voting for um, uh, Kamala Harris. Uh, but she added, actions speak louder than words and actions speak louder than an endorsement. But even that video faced backlash. So she made another one, a most recent one, where she just went in because some people were saying, oh, well, she's playing both sides. Um, and other people were saying, well, as a queer person, how dare she try and make it more difficult for other queer people? We know that uh, we all know that the Democratic Party is the only one who even cares about trans people, queer people, or whatever. And so they were, like, dragging her. But in her most recent video, she was basically saying the policies of the right are obviously messed up, but some things going on on the Democratic side are messed up, too. And I agree with her. But instead of tackling those things that are messed up, you know, some of y'all tell people to hush up about the issues in the first place. And I think that some of y'all want people to act like the issues aren't happening at all. Uh, it's like, do are, am I supposed to, are people supposed to just like ignore every broken promise, every dropped bomb, every destabilized government, every deported immigrant who might have come here in the first place because of the effects of a government we destabilize in the first, you know what I mean? Like every coup, every oppressive tactic to stifle marginalized communities within their own borders, like to make other people to make y'all feel okay with the fact that you ignore so much in order to stand these politicians in order to be a part of their fan club eternal fan club and she reiterates like so many other people do uh one side obviously is better than the other and that should be taken seriously but the reason why there's so much stagnancy in the Democratic Party is because they don't feed, they don't have to do anything. If you constantly, if y'all are constantly stifling other people from even saying, "Hey, these are the issues," or much less solving them, um, and the Democrat, the Democratic Party is gonna be like, "Hey, well, y'all like to eat BS, so we're gonna continue to serve it to you." If no one says anything and we're just like, "Oh well, the other side is worse," and we, just, if no one makes any critiques, these politicians don't have a reason to change anything. So. I think that if we, yes, we can acknowledge that one side is worse than the other while also saying, hey, what's going on on the, the, the Democratic side is some of the stuff is messed up too. We can't just, it, it would be so hypocritical. In the video, she said this, I can't put my entire name and my entire project behind one, like one side, because there is no way I can stand behind some of the left's completely transphobic and completely genocidal views. She goes on by saying, so yeah, there's, huge problems on both sides like you know what is right and wrong f trump for real but f some of the stuff that has gone down in the democratic party that has failed people like you and me and more so palestine and more so 
every marginalized community in the world. So no, I'm not going to settle for the options that are in front of me and you're not going to make me feel bad for that. And so, yeah, that's what she that's That's what she said. And I was like, I don't see anything wrong with what she's saying. It's like people can't handle their fave politicians being critiqued. It's like stand culture. Like, and instead of trying to appease or appeal to people, the, the people who are unenthusiastic or unsure, unsure, they're undecided, like you're calling them stupid. Like y'all don't have votes to spare. So it's just like, you think you'd act like it. It's just, I don't understand this, this reaction to being critiqued when y'all spend your entire social media presences critiquing Trumpers and Trump supporters. It's like, if you could dish it, you, need, you should be able to handle it, especially when the issues are not like, oh, one street is being built here and one is not. What A building is, uh, oh, we're naming a street this, or we're, is, is it Avenue or Boulevard? No, the issues be, be stuff like genocide and stuff. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So it's like, to be so mad when people are pointing things out and be gagged when no change happens and be gagged when there's stagnancy and be gagged when, oh my goodness, I can't believe this atrocity is happening yet again and we don't see any kind of, you know, activation, any kind of enthusiasm from now one of our politicians to solve these issues. It's just like, why y'all gagged? This is what we get, eternal BS in a cycle if we don't critique, if we don't say something. Anyway, so she goes on and she says, so yeah, I'm voting for Kamala, but I'm not settling for what has been offered because that's questionable. And you know, to me, <laughs> that's what I've been saying all along, right? Like the fact that the two options we have are so destructive to both our own society and the global community is something, I mean, from climate change to gen all genocide, and all, like it's, it's something to, to feel shame about as Americans. Like the fact that these two options are so destructive and that one side is trying to um, act, is trying to say, well, we shouldn't even look at the issues within our, within this democratic side because the other side is so much worse. And I'm just like that to me, lacks all kind of reason and logic we can't even attempt to improve things if y'all don't even want us to talk about the issues or address that or even bring up the fact that issues are there so she goes on and she says i'm not playing both sides i'm questioning both sides she said i'm not playing both sides i'm critiquing both sides because they are both so effed up she said voting is all we have so vote for who you think is best it's all we can do. I hope this makes it clear that no, I'm not picking the sides of what we have now. Yes, one's obviously better than the other, but I hope you don't settle for what we have. And that's really the bottom line. That's really all most people with a logical critique of everything that's going on is saying is that we cannot be over here dragging Trump supporters for being so blind to things and so, you know what I mean, tunnel vision in their own bubble. But then we are in our own bubble by ignoring the blatant glaring issues like war crime <laughs> level issues that are going on on the Democratic side, because then that gives us an excuse to continue on with the atrocities, to continue on with the heinous the heinous treatment of communities, minority communities within and outside of our borders. It gives us an excuse. Well, the other side is worse. So we got we just got to continue on bulldozing. And no, that should not be our only option. That should not be the only choice. That should not be the only, you know, way to survive, way out of this. Like we can come up with something better than this. That's all people are saying, you know? Yes, we clearly see what is in front of our faces and and there is, there are obviously one side is better than the other, like Chaperone saying, but it the choices suck. And this is this is terrible and we should be ashamed as Americans. That's it. <laughs> so yeah, on that note, thank y'all so much for watching. Tell me what you think about this because I saw Chaperone getting dragged. I'm like, I don't understand why people are so mad. Let me know in the comments. I'm sure y'all will. <laughs> Check me out on Patreon at patreon.com slash Adrian Expression. Love y'all so much and make sure that you have a good, good time eating.